captured with a Roman Republican legionary featuring Lorica Hamata, Montefortino bronze helmet and a stunning Republican shield. Use the code LEGION for a 10% discount only available for the next 10 days. Link in the description. We are in 119 AD, time of one of the greatest mysteries in the history of Rome. A Roman legion vanishes without trace from the history of the world. Hello noble ones and welcome to Mysteries of Ancient Rome, the series where we explore the unsolved and unsettled true stories that happened in ancient Rome. One of the most intriguing mysteries of Roman history is the fate of the Roman 9th Legion, Legio Nona Hispana, which seemingly disappeared in the early 2nd century, never to be seen or heard of again. There are several major theories about what happened to these 5,500 professional soldiers. We shall discuss them all here today. Now, this isn't a new problem, in fact, we could say that it has puzzled people for centuries. In the words of late Professor Eric Burley, the fate of the Ninth still engages the minds of both nitwits and sages, but that problem, one fears, will be with us for years, and ages, and ages, and ages. The origins of the Legion are somewhat uncertain, it was thought that the legion had been formed by Julius Caesar during the wars in Gaul, but it's possible that the 9th was formed in 65 BC in the Roman province of Hispania, being levied by Pompey. In the course of his Gallic wars, Julius Caesar invaded Britain twice, in 55 and 54 BC, on the first occasion taking only two legions, while the second invasion consisted of 628 ships, five legions and 2,000 cavalry. The 9th almost certainly reached Britain in 55 or 54 BC. But the year before Kaiser's assassination, it was disbanded, and then within two years, it was reformed by the first emperor, Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus Augustus. Now, when it comes to its name, Hispana, there are two theories. Either it was given as a title just to indicate where the legion was formed, or it was earned through its 10 plus years campaign in Hispania to bring the province under Roman control. It's almost certain that the legion fought alongside the 1st, 2nd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 10th and 20th legions. By the 1st century AD, the Roman Empire dominated the Mediterranean, possessing one of the most formidable military forces in history. A Roman legion contained just over 5,000 soldiers, and each of these legions had a past and a story. The 9th most famously fought in various provinces of both the late Roman Republic and the early Roman Empire, or the Principate. As stated before, it served under Julius Caesar's control, along with the 7th, 8th and 10th legions by the time he was governor of Cisalpine Gaul, acquiring some impressive victories. It is at the command of these four veteran legions that Julius Caesar will begin his Gallic Wars. The 9th will be with him, winning, securing Gaul to Rome. They also faced several tribes, such as the Helveti, the Suebi, and they also fought against Vercinza Torix in the Battle of Alesia. The 9th Legion would have been stationed throughout several forts and permanent castra, fighting against rebel Gauls and maintaining Roman dominion. The 9th fought in Greece and North Africa as well. There are still two major elements that need to be discussed when talking about the 9th Curriculum Vitae, if you will. Their role in combating and defeating Takfarina's rebellion and their participation in the invasion of Britain. In the early 1st century, there was a man by the name of Tafkarinas. He was a Numidian from the province of Africa. He had served in the Roman army for many years as an auxiliar, but had at one point decided to rebel against Rome. Now, this rebellion was particularly dangerous because he understood very well the way the Romans fought because of the time he had served in the Roman army. And to the point that he will organize his own rebel army, having his men fight in cohorts. 
Now, at this time, the Roman province of Africa was manned by only one legion, Legio Tertia Augusta. The Imperial Roman response was to send the 9th Legion, which at this time was stationed in Pannonia, to Africa to support Legio Augusta Tertia. Now, from the point of view of the legionaries of the 9th, this assignment was a sort of downgrade, so to speak. That is because African legions were considered to be inferior to the ones serving in Europe. After dealing with Takvarina's rebellion, the 9th was again stationed in Pannonia, in permanent quarters, guarding the empire against the Germanic threat in the north. The 9th will participate in two major civil wars, first under the command of Julius Caesar against Pompey. With Caesar unleashing the 9th against the Pompeians, with the legionaries standing their ground for over five hours. But the time of participation and fighting during civil wars for the 9th wasn't over. Under the first emperor Octavianus Augustus, they were called to quench Sextus Pompeius' occupation in Sicily. You see, the province of Sicilia at this time was Rome's grain supply. So a rebellion was no small issue. But the fact that the 9th was called to fight helps us understand how highly it was thought of. The 9th was also present during the Battle of Tiracium, during Caesar's African campaigns, during the Battle of Philippi and the Battle of Antium. The 9th Legion played a pivotal role in all sorts of military operations. The Legion spent almost a century in Roman Britain, and during this time, there are several occurrences that are worth of note when it comes to the presence, tasks and battles the 9th took part in while stationed in Britain. Following the main Roman invasion of AD 43, led by Emperor Claudius, the 9th Legion was instrumental in combating native resistance in northern England. In AD 50, the 9th was one of the two legions that defeated the forces of Caratacus, a 1st century British chieftain of the Catuellauni tribe who resisted the Roman conquest of Britain. One of the main objectives to ensure the success of this campaign was to subjugate any local resistance, hinder any possible unification and alliance of anti-Roman tribes and make Britain economically viable. By this time, several tribes in the south and the east were already pro-Roman, since they had contact and established trade with the empire already. Rome therefore started sending troops to the west, because that's where precious metals, materials and minerals were, such as, of course, gold in Wales, but also tin and lead deposits in the west country, that Rome needed to control, mine and exploit. Caraticus was part of the resistance in the west. While Rome was dealing with him, the 9th was sent to the north through the east coast. Their mission? Protect the northern frontier. Keep an eye on the Brigantes, a massive tribal confederation in the north that could be a potential threat to Roman control. And last but not least, the 9th also had to stop western tribes led by Caraticus from going north and get involved with the Brigantes, ally with them and ferment a unified revolt against Rome. In the same year, the legion constructed a fort, Lindum Colonia, at modern-day Lincoln. They also put down the first revolt of Venetius, king of the Brigantes tribe, between 52 and 57. The 9th was also on the front line during the revolt of Queen Boudica in AD 60. As Queen Boudica's forces approach modern-day Colchester, which would have been the Roman provincial capital, the legionaries of the 9th Legion, which would have been stationed at Lincoln, were the first emergency imperial responders. It was during the rebellion of Boudica that the 9th Legion suffered a serious defeat at the Battle of Camulodunum, modern-day Colchester in Essex. During that battle, most of the foot soldiers were killed in a disastrous attempt to combat the rebel forces led by Boudica. Only the cavalry and Quintus Petilius Cerialis, the Roman commander and administrator who was leading the legion, escaped. It is, however, important to underline that the legion was not a full strength when it faced Boudica in this battle. In fact, only half of the legion was used, since the other half was still stationed in a fort further north. The legion was then reinforced and brought back to full strength through legionaries from the Germania provinces. What led to Boudica's defeat was probably the fact that she could destroy the half 9th legion in battle. This made her think that she could defeat several Roman legions in open battle. The rebels did have numerical superiority, but as they faced 
commander Suetonius legions, namely Legio Quarta Decima Gemina and detachment from Legio Vicesima Valeria Victrix. The 10,000 highly professional and very heavily armed and armoured Roman legionaries defeated Bodica's troops. In AD 70, the legion then moved further north, becoming the most northerly of all Roman legions in Britannia, establishing a new military fort, which would be modern day York. The expansion to the north continues under General Gnaeus Julius Agricola, who will continue to annex territories and even try the conquest of that region that the Romans called Caledonia which incorporates most of modern-day Scotland. However, the Caledonians proved to be much more of a problem than the Romans had originally anticipated. Agricola moves his three main legions, one of which is the ninth to the northern frontier. As is custom for the Roman military at the end of each marching night, a Roman legion builds a castra to defend itself. During one of these nights, completely out of the blue, the Caledonians march in force and attack the ninth legion in its castra. According to Tacitus, the 9th legion managed to hold off the Caledonians for long enough for Agricola to send a cavalry troop of reinforcement, managing to rout the Caledonian forces. We know that the 9th legion survived, the text telling us having some losses. This night attack at the hands of the Caledonians is the last time we ever hear of the 9th legion. There are several theories that try to explain what happened to the 9th Legion after it disappears from all historical records. The first theory is that of annihilation in Caledonia. The idea being that as the Legion was pushing forward into Caledonia, it was ambushed and destroyed by the local barbarian forces. This used to be the most popular theory, so much so that the film The Eagle of the Ninth was based on this idea, and in fact itself was based on the book The Eagle of the Ninth. However, most historians and archaeologists now completely disregard this idea. The reason being is that we have archaeological proof that the legion was found with its stamp Legio Nona Hispana back in Europe after the date in which it was supposedly destroyed up in Caledonia. So as much as this theory makes for a great plot twist for both the movie and the book, it is now regarded as fiction. The second theory is still similar to the first in the sense that it's still the concept of the legion was completely destroyed by enemy forces, but in this case it wasn't destroyed in Caledonia, it was in fact destroyed in the Middle East to be specific during a revolt in Roman Judea. Although we can back up the idea that the legion was found in this specific province, we don't know if the legion was in fact destroyed and there is no proof to substantiate this, which means that, even though this could be a compelling argument, at this time it's nothing more than full speculation. The third theory is probably the less interesting one, in the sense that it is possible that the legion was simply disbanded, in the sense that for reasons that can go from the legion having suffered heavy losses and therefore they decided not to replenish it again, to simply there was no need to have a ninth legion in this specific moment, in this specific area, the legion was disbanded and the legionaries that were part of it were actually moved into other legions to replenish their forces. This could explain why there is no mention whatsoever of this, because if the reason why the ninth stops to exist is something as basic as, we decided we don't need it anymore. Of course, all of these theories still are, well, theories, and unless we find more data or archaeological evidence, they will, well, remain so. But I would like to add one more thing, just to spice things up and give you a little food for thought. If the Legion really was destroyed by barbarian forces because of an ambush, maybe the Empire didn't tell us about it and did not record it, because they wanted to keep it a secret. Now hear me out for a second. If you lose a battle, but then you come back and win it, then you know that's something you can justify. But if you lose a legion that you weren't supposed to lose, in a territory there is already at high risk of rebellion against Rome, wouldn't the news of that defeat being in fact a weapon that could be used against the Empire? Now really think about it. The first time that the 9th legion lost against, for example, Bodica, well, it was only 2,000 men against what was probably a number of 100,000. So that's a very honourable loss, if you will. I mean, it's already quite impressive that they even tried. But what if a full-on of 5,500 professional men were destroyed, in fact, by enemies that were not considered to be strong at all? Would the Empire tell us about it? Or would they make sure that this news wouldn't travel at all 
through the provinces. Now, I'm not saying that this is definitely what happened. Perhaps it is something as simple as they didn't need the legion anymore and there was nothing to say about that. But if something happened to the legionaries of the 9th that was so horrible that it needed to be kept a secret, it would make the mystery of the 9th one of the first organized cover-ups in history. Alright noble ones, well I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did please remember thumbs up and I will soon publish the second episode of Mysteries of Ancient Rome, so stay tuned and if you're not yet a noble one, become a noble one, subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron, and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.